because that's the it's, first thing on our list is kind of like how do you decide who's not a good candidate because a lot of people just assume that if they have the money and if they you know come to us that they're going to get one and it's not always the case so i mean what's your kind of criteria for yeah i mean i'm pretty right i'm thing? pretty i don't go necessarily by any numbers you know i know that there's uh oh hold on someone's asking for gus gus come here uh, <laughs> hold on he's over there he's yeah. he's, he's sleeping on the couch uh, there, he there he is, is. look at that big there boy is. there's <laughs> gus you know i think that the big thing is a lot of times everybody thinks like okay it's gonna give me volume Number one, I think that's the most common misconception, especially for younger patients. They say like, oh, I want to do a lip lift because I don't want to do filler anymore. And it, it's a misconception. You know, you're not going to get permanent volume. You continue to lose volume from the time that you're 14 on. And that's just the aging process. That's the conveyor belt of time moving. You know, when people tell me immediately they're like, oh, I want permanent volume. I tell them one, nothing's permanent. Mm -hmm. Two, you're going to be disappointed if you're just doing this for volume. Three, there's no reason to do a scar just for the sake of, of volume. Like, it doesn't make mm -hmm. any sense to me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's really five patients who I think are not good candidates for a lip okay. lift. Um, the first one is the one who's got a short distance that doesn't have any tooth show. So if you have a short distance and you don't have tooth show, right. then guess what? You don't need a lip lift. What you need is you need co cosmetic dentistry to bring right. the teeth down. Number, one. number two, the patient who's got the long filtrum, but they also have a ton of tooth show. So that's a structural issue, right? Yeah. That's that's a congen. I hate saying congenital, but that's a congenital right. malformation, mm -hmm. high arched palate. That's someone who needed orthodontic surgery early on, or who needs orthodontic surgery. Yeah. And so these are all. So those are two patients who have structural issues. Mm -hmm. And yes, it seems simple, right? You've got a long filtrum but you've got a lot of tooth shows. So the window behind the curtain is really long. If the window is really long, it even doesn't matter if the curtain is really long too, if you shorten up that curtain, that window is gonna look really stupid behind it. Right. So, you know, those are two classic patients. The other one is the patient who's got the, the high arched lip already. And so those patients may have a shortish or moderate distance of the filtrum itself, but the mm -hmm. prolabium yeah. and the prolabium is the distance from the from the sides of the nose to the angle mm -hmm. of the mouth, the commissures, those patients that have that long prolabium, those patients may not necessarily need a lip lift because they may accentuate and they get what's called an A-frame deformity. So those patients are better served with corner lip lifts, medialized corner lip lifts, some people call them vermilion exposures. And so there's a couple different procedures. So those may be better off. The other patients are the ones that got a downturn already. So they've already got that like commissures or the corners of the mouth that are going down. You pick them up, guess what? It doesn't matter how much extended release you do on the sides, no matter what you do there. It's gonna only flip it up a little bit unless you address the corners, it's not gonna do anything there. Yeah. So you gotta address the corners. And so those patients may need to do a lip lift and a corner lift at the same time, or maybe they just need a corner lift. And then finally, the patient who's got a prominent nasal sill or someone who's got a nasal spine that's sticking out very prominently, which gives their, their whole sill underneath becomes very circular. So those patients usually need to have their nasal sills taken down before a surgery. So they usually need to either have the nose deep projected or they need to have other forms of structural surgery before doing the lip lift because otherwise the last thing you want with a lip lift is to turn a normal structure and then bring attention to it it takes a special kind of bold is what the what the textbook says mm -hmm. you know it takes a special kind of bold to intentionally put a, a scar in the middle of the nose you need to know what you're doing and I right. think this is something that I talked to you about when you were picking my brain about it was, yeah. I think of this almost like reconstruction. So I think of it very similar to cleft lip repair. Um, I mm -hmm. did a ton of those in my, in my training, in my fellowship, in my yeah. fellowships. And so I think of it like that, where you want to place scars in natural shadows, right? Yeah. And so you're better off putting a scar in a shadow than you are putting a perfect scar in a bad place, because that's going to bring attention right away. So. I'm not a big fan of that. So those are my, my five, like, notes, like, absolute notes. What, have you seen people who've had prior surgery, whether it's a prior lip lift or lip reduction sometimes if they've had silicone injections, where they just have some slight oral incompetence where you worry about making that worse? Because I've seen just a couple of patients like that where I was like, ah, I'm just going to make this condition even worse. Where they yeah, absolutely. They Listen, put their they lips oral, together, they, they can't have, really get them together at rest. Yeah, if they have oral incompetence, forget it. Then you're screwed. Then at that point, your best bet is to do a V to Y. You know, the, the solution for oral incompetence is V to Y. It's not lip lift, roll out. It's you actually got to bring the lip down and out. And so then you have to evaluate the lower lip too, because they may need upper V to Ys, but they may also need lower V to Ys. And the thing for people to remember is oftentimes patients often think, oh, I want a V to Y because it's a permanent volume. And again, mm -hmm. using that word permanent. It doesn't give you volume. If you look at the studies, anybody who does 
a V to Y for the sake of volume alone is going to be disappointed. You, you gain some volume, it's nice, but the consequences of it, even though you have no scar on the outside, you can get numbness, you can get all these other things. But the big thing is that it's to improve the tone of the lip. So yeah. you're borrowing tissue from the sides of the lip mm -hmm. to bring it forward towards the middle to create that volume to get that roll. So when you've got that oral incompetence issue and what, what Gary's mentioning when he means oral incompetence, he means you can't close the lips, you can't bring them together. So if you have that issue, then if you pick this up, you pick this up, you do this, guess what? It's gonna look even worse. So the thing you gotta do is you gotta bring that mucosa or the actual lip down and you do that from inside the mouth. It works really, really well. You end up having to borrow from a couple different places, but traditionally my patients that I see that have, you know, like you said, if they've had a lip lift lip reduction, mm -hmm. um, they've got that incompetence. Then it gets a little tricky because even when you're doing the, the V to Y, you yeah. encounter some scar tissue, but you're, you're safe. You know, it's, it's the safest thing to do just to kind of help them out.